preparation for um, the budget that we're just finishing up. And as a result of our budget cuts, we have eliminated some of our early voting sites. And uh, we've gotten some feedback from the voters. Early voting is very popular. And we'll be looking to see if there's any way we can restore some of those sites for the general election. So uh, in your handouts, which I believe Evelyn has provided for you, you will have a list of the 11 early voting sites that are available. And it's important for all of our voters to know that it does not matter where you live, you can vote at any of those early voting sites. So we will have six days in week one and six days in week two. The hours of operation are from 10 to 6. And uh, traditionally, we've had Sunday voting, but Sunday voting has been a block of three hours. So it seemed like um, we would get more of an opportunity for continuity and efficiency if we, since we had to cut, if we put all of our hours, made all of our hours the same. So we're going Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6 at all 11 locations. A person, doesn't matter whether they live, which precinct they typically vote in, can vote at one of those early voting locations. Um, our dates, the early voting will begin on Monday, August 9th. That's week one. Week two will begin Monday, August 16th. And I've already mentioned the times, 10 to 6. Absentee ballots remain a very uh, popular form of voting. <laughs> And we're putting a different flair to it, hoping that it will catch on. I think it is catching on. We're saying vote by mail using your absentee ballot. To date, we've sent out over 72,000 absentee ballots. Some of those have already started to come back in. As a matter of fact, it's probably closer to 75,000 absentee ballots have already been mailed out, mailed out successfully to our voters. Some of them have already started to come back as voted absentee ballots. Voters really enjoy this uh, this form of convenience voting. We have also set up some drop-off sites. Sometimes voter service ballots are too expensive. It's too far to go. I don't want to put it in the mail. So as a courtesy to those communities where we have eliminated the early voting sites, we have scheduled two days where a voter can come in request the ballot or drop off a ballot. We have publicized those locations with the city clerks there on our websites. We have handouts in the office. So voters can come drop their absentee ballots. Uh, I would have two staff members there with the election connection van, and they would use the same procedure for dropping off their ballots as they would if they come into either this office or the downtown office. And we want to remind voters that August 18th, is the deadline to request an absentee ballot to be mailed. It is very important that voters understand that. If they want an absentee ballot to be mailed, we must have their request by August 18th. Now, if a voter says, thinks at the last minute they'd like to have an absentee ballot, then they can pick an absentee ballot up beginning the Friday before the election. And all absentee ballots to be picked up, will be picked up here from the Voting Equipment Center uh, that, we are, that we're meeting in right now. That way it cuts down on the confusion if a voter calls in on Friday morning and say I'd like to have an absentee ballot uh, pick up, then we will give them the directions in terms of the time that that ballot is going to be ready so the voter doesn't have to wait for the ballot. So we use that process in the last cycle that works relatively well. In terms of voting equipment, we have the EVIT machines. That's the machine over to my left. This is the electronic voter identification machine. When a voter come, goes into our site now, we've been using this for about two years, they swipe their driver's license, which has the barcode, the uh, information bar on the back. And their information is going to pop up on the screen. They'll be verified. Then that voter just gets voted passed, goes off to vote next. It's very simple. Voters love it. We have the DS200, which is the optical scanner, and these are already prepared and ready to go. We'll start to ship those out on Monday. So if anybody wants to see a really exciting operation, come back and see those uh, trucks being loaded with the voter equipment. It is really a uh, very special time for us. We have the Ivatronics. We will have to have an Ivatronic in each 
each of our locations because the Albatronics are in the precinct specifically for the voters who have are visually impaired or voters who are disabled to some degree and they want to use the Albatronic, which is a touch screen. The ballot on demand machines are probably out already because we have nearly voting starting Monday. Ballot on demand machines, we put those in use. Um, the first ones were used in 08, and that's where when a voter comes in, gets their card swiped on the event, we find out who they are. Then a ballot just specifically for that individual is going to be produced. We won't have any ballots sitting around because we don't know who's going to show up at a period of voting site. So for us, being as large as we are, the ballot on demand machine is our best opportunity to get the correct ballot for the voter. And on demand, my staff is rolling in a uh, ballot on demand machine. It is tied to our database. It is a printer. So when we check that voter in, this machine is going to be networked to that one, and it's going to present, print the ballot, rather, specifically for that voter. If a voter has a score ballot, we go through the same process of, again, uh, entering their information so that it can be printed just for that voter. Um, election night reporting, 